Today, I'm gonna to clue you in on one of the most underappreciated public goods that keeps our society going. Our cellular society, that is. Making it actually a public bodily good. A series of systems which is responsible for keeping the cellular garbage from piling up. Because just like your kitchen, if it doesn't get taken out, you're as good as dead. Mainly because you gotta deal with the wrath of mom or flashbacks of it. <sighs> so I guess here's why taking out both the kitchen garbage and your cellular garbage is good for longevity. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, as mentioned, we are talking about how to not get the biological equivalent of a rolling pin to the head from mom by understanding and optimizing your trash removing skills in your cells, that is. And after we nerd out on some of the details surrounding the cellular cleanup processes, we'll talk about ways to increase your odds, likelihood, and probability of ramping up these very pathways through something that you can very much control, your lifestyle. And I know what you're thinking, especially if you've been around these parts or are a longevity enthusiast, autophagy, to which I'll say yes. However, there is quite a bit more to this story. And it starts by the many outputs produced by our code of life or DNA, which hold the instructions for the building blocks of life, proteins. And they are called this because every single function in our body relies on proteins in some way, shape, form, or manner. Every single one. Whether it be for signaling, triggering reactions, transporting molecules, providing structure, fighting off enemies, or a laundry list of other essential functions. I guess what I'm trying to get across here is that these are some badass, critical for life cellular compadres. But here's the thing, because they do so much, there's a lot of them. Adding to that, they come in these long stringy formations. So to make things fit and work properly within the cell, we got to do some folding. And it just so happens after millions of years of evolution, this folding is critical for their function. And it is when these do it all ninja masters become misfolded, the problems begin. Why, you ask? Well, because as you could imagine, misfolded proteins lose their intended shape. And as a byproduct, this often makes those proteins incapable for their designated tasks. And I hate to say it, but it gets worse. These misfolded protein mutants can begin to aggregate within the cell clogging cellular machinery, disrupting cellular transport, and impairing cellular function even further. Not cool. I know. They can even accumulate in areas and begin triggering cellular stress, eliciting the stress response, leading to increased inflammation, and ultimately, cell death. Whoa. Uh, super not cool. But it can get worse. As one of these spots this has been observed to happen is in the brain. As accumulation of damaged proteins such as amyloid beta and tau have been linked to the onset and progression of neurodegenerative disease. Okay, I've had enough. How do we make sure this doesn't happen never? Or at least as little as possible. Enter your cellular sanitation system. And just like the sanitation system out here in the real world, it comes equipped with garbage cans, sanitation workers, trucks, and recycling centers. Really quite impressive. All starting with the identification of damage, which let's be honest, damage is gonna happen. That is cellular life. And why we have all of these repair systems in the first place. Our job as people who wanna get the most out of their pretty cool meat suit for as long as humanly possible is to control what we can control and limit it. So let's start in our cellular kitchen. Say you see a half eaten plate of food on the counter with maybe a few flies scouting it out. Tasty. I know, you have a couple of options. First, you can try to salvage it for leftovers. So you decide to chaperone it to the nearest Tupperware to be fixed for later. 
This is what chaperone proteins do when they see a misfolded protein in our cells. They identify it and they repair it. And all is well, it goes on its merry way. Pretty cool. However, these little guys can be overwhelmed easily in a stressful environment. So let's continue down the garbage journey. If this plate is unsalvageable, you've then identified it for the kitchen garbage. This is what a small protein called ubiquitin does in your cells. It tags damaged proteins and identifies them for degradation. And once a protein is tagged by ubiquitin, it is officially thrown in the garbage when it is picked up by a proteasome, which are our cells garbage disposal units, responsible for breaking down proteins that are no longer needed or damaged, ultimately preventing them from causing problems throughout the rest of the cell or smelling up your kitchen. Now, just like any long-lived complex system, there are typically multiple ways to complete similar tasks. You see, proteasomes typically target a single protein for degradation, spitting out small peptides as byproducts. From here, those byproducts can be further degraded via autophagy, or a broader yet similar recycling process structured around autophagosomes, which are double-membraned larger structures that are capable of engulfing many cellular components, including proteins for degradation. Think of these as the garbage trucks that pick up yours and all of your neighbor's trash at the curb two days a week. You better be ready for them or they'll just keep going. These are the main players in autophagy, with the ability, like mentioned before, to scoop up proteasome byproducts. Now, I bet you're wondering, where does all this stuff go? Well, the cellular recycling center, of course. The lysosome or large cellular organelle in which autophagosomes fuse with. Here, the cellular junk is further broken down into basic materials, such as amino acids, that can be used to create new, useful cellular components. Pretty cool, right? No wonder we're so damn resilient. We've got these magical recycling and repair processes going on a million times a second, which is kind of scary when you think about it. As always, the goal here is twofold, to optimize while limiting the dysfunction in the first place, which unfortunately are modern day societal norms, you know, the ultra processed 24 seven eating, the sleep when I'm dead mentality, the extreme sedentary behavior, severe nature deficit and nonstop stress actively work against creating this perfect storm of both cellular dysfunction and impaired cellular cleanup. Not a combo for longevity right there, or quite frankly, just having a good day. So what are some things we can do to sharpen up and optimize these cleanup processes? Let's take a look. When it comes to ramping up these sanitation pathways, I have some good news. There happen to be quite a number of proven ways that we can increase processes like autophagy and its supporting systems throughout our body. In fact, I did a whole video on my personal autophagy routine right here. The interesting thing is, many of the lifestyle factors that stimulate these processes do so through eliciting a physiological stress or what I like to call good stress, planned stress, strategic stress. I bet you didn't know there was strategic stress. There is, mm-hmm. Taunting the cell like an opposing fan at a football game to hunker down and survive. This good stress signals an internal time of hardship, so the cell ramps up processes which promote conservation. Growth, or the cellular pathway for it, mTOR, get silenced, while repair, recycling, and reuse processes do the opposite. This response ultimately preserves cellular energy, reduces oxidative stress, cleans up misfolded proteins, and stimulates mitochondria turnover, helping the cell survive and setting it up to become stronger. Pretty nice feature to have, right? And if the cell can't handle the stress due to its damaged machinery, it programs controlled cellular death or a process called apoptosis. I mean, imagine if we had to manage and regulate even a fraction of this consciously. We'd never get anything done and likely wouldn't be alive, probably using our limited time here scrolling TikTok. Anyway, 
When we talk about best routes of action, again, it's twofold. Avoid doing things that create an internal cellular environment of bad stress, an environment that is riddled with chronic inflammation, mitochondria dysfunction, and nonstop growth, because this right here will create the dreaded double whammy we referenced before, increased dysfunction and decreased repair and recycling. Yet again, understanding that this is the default environment that our modern day societal norms promote and replacing it with habits, routines, and rituals focused around the following, all of which we have deeper research riddled videos on, which I'll link in the show notes below. First, strategic meal timing. As studies on time-restricted eating in humans have shown that consuming one's energy within an eight-hour daily window or less can upregulate the expression of autophagy genes, especially when compared to the normal 12 to 16-hour daily feeding window. Next, and probably the best cellular sanitation stimulator that we have, good old badonka donking, or exercise. Research here has shown that exercise increases the family of proteins which kick off cellular cleanup processes. And adding just 30 minutes of cardio can induce autophagosome formation, which indicates the initiation of autophagy. Another reason movement is medicine. Then what we eat and don't eat seems to play a role too as carbohydrate restriction or a low carb way of eating has been shown to increase autophagy by inducing a state of ketosis and dietary phytonutrients which are plants polyphenols flavonoids and compounds found in the pigment of fruits and veggies have also displayed promise in upregulating the pathways for cellular recycling and get this it includes drinks such as coffee and tea as well just be careful with those milkshakes in disguise. Additional beneficial stressors such as heat and cold exposure, think sauna and ice bath, have shown potential here as well, as the heat shock response from planned heat exposure has shown the potential to induce autophagy in animal models, while also stimulating the repair of damaged and misfolded proteins. We like that. While cold exposure has been shown to have similar effects via the cold shock response. Finally, we end with the best detoxification habit we have at our disposal. And no, you can't buy it from a guru on the internet or at Target. Uh -uh. We are talking about high quality circadian aligned sleep. Not only is it the time where our brain cleanup system or the glymphatic system is activated, which is a nighttime only process where neurotoxic proteins that have accumulated in the brain get washed away. More on that here. It has also been shown to be critical for getting the full benefits of cellular recycling. One of the reasons being that melatonin or our master sleep hormone plays a big modulating role in autophagy. So keeping strong circadian alignment, going to bed when the sun goes down and waking up when it rises, prioritizing an eight hour sleep opportunity in between is the final critical piece in this cellular cleanup puzzle. Listen. Just like the community that you live in, your body gets pretty messy when you don't pay the sanitation tax. In this case, the tax being the lifestyle you live. And to be honest, I don't even see living a healthy lifestyle being a biological tax at all. Because I'm pretty sure there's never been a tax in the history of taxes that's provided so much daily and long-term upside and benefits. We're talking about a mood, feel, cognition, physical function, and happiness multiplier here. Exactly why this so-called tax is actually an investment. It keeps paying greater and greater dividends, especially as we accrue chronological years on this beautiful floating rock. So help your sanitation department help you already. And don't forget to take out the trash or your mom will find you or haunt you, which I think is probably worse. And uh, none of us want that. 